Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, good evening and welcome to the first of the editions of Late uh, Smart Talk. My name is Wallace Chapman uh, and it is a real pleasure to be here hosting, uh, having been a long time follower of the series. I came to a, a number seeing Sir Ray Avery here and uh, and the Honey Car and uh, Treaty of Waitangi, that, that was a special one as well. But here I'm hosting this uh, special event. We kick off tonight part one of a seven part series, The Seven Deadly Sins. Uh, of all the seven deadly sins, you could argue that envy, the one we talk about tonight, is more applicable today as any. Egalitarianism and envy are twin strands of recurring thought in the history of philosophical and political thinking, and there's a particularly indigenous offshoot of the notion of envy, the tall poppy. It inhabits business, it inhabits the arts, it inhabits fashion and celebrity culture, but is it still a big part of how we see ourselves uh, and the world? And in his book, Envy, Joseph Epstein calls it the only vice among the seven deadly sins that is not fun at all. Um, so, you know, with sloth, you can translate that to having a beer on the deck, fine. Um, with gluttony, one too many dinners perhaps at the French cafe or Martin Bosley's, um, greed, frivolously spending too much for your fortnightly pay on clothes from world. Um, That's a good thing. Uh, well, uh, and um, last, well, just turn on the TV. But envy, what good can you say? Uh, Dante had it in for envy, placing it the furthest away from paradise. Uh, the envious are portrayed with their eyes so shut, weeping over their sins. Uh, but it's relevant, if not more relevant, than the others. According to the philosopher John Rawls, it's the foundation of our justice system. Uh, he says that envy is the fundamental motivation for the best in us and the worst in us. Uh, what is the purchase of a Hermes Birkin bag if it is not a direct appeal to envy? Um, I have something you do not. Uh, and of all the places on earth to discuss envy, there is no more appropriate place than here in Aotearoa, the land of supposed uh, equal opportunity. So... It was a tough nut, this one, so I had to bring on the big guns. I needed, I needed a theologian, I needed a fashion designer, and I needed an artist. Will you please welcome Sir Lloyd Gehring. <laughs> he is probably dangerously close to being a national treasure. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> he is. <laughs> he is. <laughs> you are. <laughs> A New Zealand theologian who in 1967 gained a high profile by facing charges of heresy, charged with disturbing the peace and unity of the Presbyterian Church after a dramatic two-day televised trial. Now, that's before close-up or Campbell Live, perhaps. <laughs> uh, uh, the assembly judged no doct doctrinal error had been proved. Born in 1918, Gearing continues to lecture, to speak, to travel, and he looks very well. Welcome to the show, Sir Lloyd. Denise lestrange Corbet needs no introduction, celebrating 22 years in business world, of which she co-founded as a, an iconic New Zealand fashion brand, uh, having had a major retrospective by this institution, the Auckland Museum here. World has shown at official fashion weeks in London, Paris, Hong Kong, Singapore, Australia. They put on a spectacular show, a sea of colour, glamour, glitter, and more than all of that, though, uh, last year, Denise made number seven on New Zealand's most trusted poll. Um, <laughs> <laughs> ahead, yeah, ahead of Kim Hill, ahead of Kevin Milne even, and about a thousand places ahead of <coughs> um, John Banks. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Was it a joke? <laughs> Was it? No. <laughs> How are you? Welcome to the show, Denise lestrange Clavey. <laughs> Speaking of glitter, one person who is reinterpreting and reinvigorating New Zealand art right now is Reuben Patterson, who literally... Uh, uses glitter. Uh, kilograms of the stuff by the look. Uh, Ruben Patterson, uh, Nati Rangatihi and Tuhoi presents new, new readings of Māori uh, cultural motifs and landscapes in his art and creates objects that shimmer between worlds of traditional Māori ideas of place and contemporary culture. His pieces dazzle and seduce with their glittering armour and he's been represented in many Biennale and triennials through the world, won the Wallace Art Award De Development Prize with a residency to New York. Uh, and he has not been on a most trusted list either. But he is here tonight. <laughs> not yet, Wallace. Not yet. Not yet, Wallace. Welcome to the show, Ruben. Thank you. Welcome Wallace. to the show. Good to have you here. Actually, straight up, I want you to, all three of you, you've had a, a, a glass of wine. You've had a glass of wine, not here, but up there. Um, so, honesty, okay? Is there any sin you haven't committed altogether, right? Wrath. 
Yes, I have committed the wrath. <laughs> You've committed wrath? Oh, I've done all of those, yes, that's right. Yep. Absolutely. Yes. Right, greed. Uh, yes. Every day of the week. <laughs> yeah. Especially when I was young. Right. <laughs> Sloth. Oh, yes. yeah, in front of yeah, the TV. That's right. Yep. Sloth? Yeah, yeah. Pride. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yes. But Pride? See, yeah. Sloth and greed come together because you're lying on the couch. Eating, eating. Of, <laughs> inhaling a, a wheel of free. Right. Know. Okay. Lust. Oh, of well. Oh. <laughs> I'm only asking the questions, Lloyd. <laughs> Lust. Mind you, in my not age, mind it's you. a bit different. <laughs> Lust. Not nearly as much as I'd like. Right. Rude? Over there? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Gluttony. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, right. Um, so what about you, Denise? Let's go to you. The idea of envy that you have something that I desire, and I want it and I can't get it, or at least I aspire to it. I mean, isn't that just a simple definition of fashion? Well, yes, probably. I mean, you know, <laughs> all fashion designers have um, varying degrees of envy. I just call it jealousy, quite frankly. Right, Yeah. right. But isn't it, is that an issue in fashion? I mean, the, the, that whole... Like, oh, it's an issue in all um, industries... But I think more so in fashion and um, the beauty cultures because mm. it's very um, women orientated and tends to get quite bitchy. Mm. Mm. And it just, you know, it's part and parcel of it and you just have to have a very thick hide. Right. What, um, what about you, Ruben? Uh, how relevant is envy to you uh, in art and in your life? Does it re is it represented in it all in your, in your work? I mean, we're not talking the sort of Her Hieronymus Bosch here, late medieval stuff, sure. but, you know. Uh, I, having been invited to this talk, I had to really think about whether envy had been a part of my life, and I do think there's a close call somewhat between jealousy and envy. Although I do think, like, when I was thinking about it today, I do think that uh, my work as an artist and, and the work of other artists in New Zealand do somewhat rely on envy because we are we have we have this competition within ourselves to try to reach an audience that is very very small, considering this is New Zealand. So I think envy maybe is a motivator, in that it somehow mm. makes us makes us work. So as Sir Lloyd was saying before, maybe that's the beguiling part of envy that, that does motivate us to get us working as artists in a very small community with um, small purses. Mm. Is, does that exist in fashion? I mean, that sort of pro close proximity to, to another fashion designer, I mean, a, pers y y a person might, let's say Trelise Cooper, mm. might want to, you know, I don't want to mention her name. I saw her, yeah. Oh, she's here. <laughs> um, but may, may, may win an award or something like that, and you go, oh, well, why did she win that? I mean, there's a quote here from you. A, she's not really a fashion designer. She just copies. I never said that. <laughs> you said it to me upstairs. You heard it, mate. about her. Oh, not not a Trelise Cooper. Yeah, not a Trelise, no. No, but I, I have said that before. And it, yeah. it does... Um, not Trelise. No, not Trelise in particular. But a lot of other people who claim to be fashion designers who aren't. But a copyist? Yep, I've absolutely said that. Not because I'm jealous or envious, but because it's the truth. I think... <laughs> it is, it's the truth. And people are scared about the truth. Probably but, more than anything else. But, but you, darling, you mm. live in Aotearoa. Formula, it's harsh. No, it's not harsh. You see, I, I was brought up in England, and it's like, if you think that's harsh, darling, yeah, it's nothing. <laughs> it's, it's the truth. It's black or it's white. Mm. It's no grey bits in the middle. So what do you say? Oh, well, she's, she's just... It's her, you know... Um, her homage to another fashion designer. It's like, <laughs> no, it's not. You're a copyist because you oh. haven't got a fucking brain in your head to come up with your own designs. I mean, that's what it is. Round of applause for Denise for being so honest. Sorry. You know, <laughs> I say... But actually, having said that, I did research... Well, not research. I looked on the internet for two seconds. Right. Um, there are two types of envy. Did you know that? No. There's malicious envy and benign envy. Oops. That's right. Oh, okay. sorry. <laughs> Are you trying to upstage I, me there? You just take over the show, <laughs> someone. It's so, there's very benign important envy and to distinguish between two types of envy. Ah. How did I miss that? One is How malignant. How did you miss that? 
Do you want to swap because seats? It, 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 it wants to take something away. It wants to undermine the people you're envious of. That, that's very bad and malignant. And, and that can eat away your own soul too. Mm. But there is a benign form of envy. Now, I mean, I envy you your age. I envy you the fact that you can hear and I can't hear clearly. <laughs> I envy the fact that you live in the computer age and it didn't come on till after I retired and what I could have done with the computer in all my working life. That's the sort of things I envy. But I don't want it to take it away from you. I just envy you the fact that you have that. Do you, is that a process that you go through? You meet us upstairs and you go, oh, I wish I was Reuben. <laughs> Good looking, no, Māori. No, you know, I, has it all with the grants, no, perhaps? No, I don't, don't wish I was Reuben. I'm glad Reuben is Reuben. Yes, so am I. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I'm very satisfied with being myself, and I've been very fortunate to have lived the life I have. So, I've, I, in that sense, I don't en envy other people, but I envy certain things which I now lack, you see, such as being okay. able to hear. Okay, what... <laughs> Oh. Could I ask Sir Lloyd a question? Absolutely. Because if there's, if there's things you are envious about in our world, do you think there are things that we should be envious about the world you have lived, the world without technology? Are there things Great there question. that... Well, I don't think looking back, I can see an age where I would have preferred to have been. But I'm very glad to have been the 20th century because the 20th century... As we were young, we looked forward to the future with tremendous anticipation. The world was our oyster. The world was, we were going to conquer the world, we were going to conquer the universe and everything. We end the 20th century feeling rather gloomy about the future. Yes, absolutely. With mm. all sorts of problems ahead of us. And so, in that sense, I've been fortunate, mm. uh, though I do envy the sort of sense of being young mm. in you. What's the difference between benign envy and admiration, A, and B, so is it therefore proud if you're not envious? If, if, therefore, it's not, if, is it proud if you're not envious? What do you reckon, Denise? Can you repeat the question? <laughs> yeah, that takes a bit of thinking, that one. So question, question number one is, what's the difference between benign envy mm. and admiration? And part B is, so therefore, is it proud if you're not envious of anyone? No, it's not proud. I think if you're... A benign envy is just... Using... It's not envy, really. A benign yourself. envy is saying... It's, it's not a jealousy, it's just... Yeah, you're, you like something, but you don't care whether you have it or not. You're Using not it to better it. yourself. Is yeah. how I would maybe. Think I of think it. the question is onto something here. I, I think if you look at benign envy, there isn't much difference between that and simply admiring what mm. they what Admiration. you find there. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to take it nice. away from that would be malignant envy. But mm. benign envy is accepting and think, my word, you know, I would like to be like that, and I, and it's very good that that person is like that. So mm. just as an example, the benign envy was an example of you admiring. The, the fact that we could hear properly. Yes, that's right, yeah. exactly. Uh, and uh, malignant envy is someone, it's, like, it's someone like you going to another designer going, what a bitch she copies. <laughs> I don't say <laughs> that. I know, I, know, like I know you don't say <laughs> it. <laughs> I, I, You're going to get me I, such a bad I, rep. I know you don't say it. It's an example. No, benign yeah. envy is, it could almost be admiration. You know, you yes, don't, that's right. you that's don't right. not wish them to have it. You think, well, that's really great you've got that. And you don't think... I wish I had that. You just think it's great you have it. Yes, that's right. But you can't have it. But mm. it's not wishing them ill will. Mm. Just, just briefly, just uh, some closing thoughts. Um, Sir Lloyd, um, you wrote an open letter to Jesus in 2000, and it was a beautiful letter. Uh, you said, you are the one who through indirectly brought the modern world into being. It isn't perfect by a long chalk, but we care for the sick. We have freed the slaves. We've drawn attention to human rights. So I write this on behalf of you, our numeral fans around the world. If Jesus was sitting here right now with the four of us, God help him, um, what would he say of the world today and of envy? If Jesus he, was here he, right what now. What would he say today? If he was here. <laughs> he would say something like, it's possible for you all to live life to the full. 
And remember that you shouldn't be looking to some far distant future for some great change. You should live it in the here and the now. That's what he meant by saying the kingdom of God is already among you. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, um, ha haven't they done well? Round of applause. <laughs> Reuben Patterson. <laughs> Denise Estrange Cobay. <laughs> Sir Lloyd Gearing. Thank you. And Wallace Chapman. Fantastic.